Hi creatives, today I'm gonna see how many logo design tips I can cram into a 10 minute video. I saw Ben Marriott do something really similar about animations, so make sure you go check out his video if you like After Effects and animation. Let's jump in and see how you can improve your logo designs. The tips I'm gonna share today are mostly in Adobe Illustrator and for logo design, but if you work in Adobe Illustrator in other types of projects, these tips can be super helpful as well. If you have a logo icon that you want to change the structure and look of, but you don't want to move all the individual anchor points, you can actually use the Puppet Warp tool for this. Just click where you want to add an anchor point and then move it around until you feel happy. This is also really perfect for creating more organic looking shapes by transforming shapes that we have from the shape builder. A super handy way to create a more dynamic logo is to use the width tool. Start by creating a line and then mark out the area that you want to change the width of. Then just drag it in and out to change the width of it. If you want to have more control over specific sections, you can add more anchor points and alter them each individually. Clients often need a logo in white that they can place on dark backgrounds. But don't just copy your black version of the logo and change the color to white. Instead, we want to tweak the logo to make sure that it optically looks the same. The thing is, when we see something in white, it actually looks bigger. So all the white space that you've added in your design will feel smaller, and the design can easily be less visible at small sizes. Sometimes you just need to make all the elements a little bit thinner or more spaced apart. Sometimes you might need to look at how sharp the edges appear, or make other tweaks so that the logo in white and the logo in black optically are the same. It's a good idea, I think, to keep both of them next to each other as you work on it, to make it a little bit easier to compare. No designer wants to send off their design to a client only to realize the design already exists out there for another company. Even though we always try our best to have original ideas, logos are inherently simple in shape, so it's easy to accidentally copy something that already exists. To check your logo, go to the Weibo database. Here you can upload an image of your logo and do an image search. This will search for trademarks that are visually similar all over the world. You can also use this tool for research by searching for company names that are similar, so you make sure that there's no confusion there, and you can also search by industry. If you're creating a very symmetrical logo with repeating elements, especially if you want to have four or more, make a perfectly aligned shape by selecting the base shape, then press R and then click where you want the center of your shape to be while you hold down Alt. Then set the number of degrees that you want the rotation for each new copy to be and then select copy. Then you can click Command D to add more until you complete the circle. If you want your shape to be perfectly symmetrical, make sure that you add a number for the degrees that's divisible by 360. So like 30, 45, 60 or 90 for example. If you want to fix the kerning in your wordmark but you don't want to expand your text just yet, click between the letters that you want to move and then hold down Alt. Now you can use your arrow keys to manually move the kerning in really small steps until it feels right. We always want to be as inclusive and accessible as we can when we create logos, or anything really. One way to make sure your logos will be visible to as many people as possible is to use a contrast and color checker. You can use a tool like accessibilitychecker.org and just put in your color values that you're going to use for your logo and your background colors for the brand, and this will show you if there's enough contrast for this option to be inclusive. If it's not, you can go back into Illustrator, make small tweaks, and make sure you find a combination that works. When you create logos, you often combine a few different shapes using the Pathfinder tool. But sometimes you end up with a lot of different anchor points, and it can actually make it quite hard to edit the logo. One way to avoid this is to click the little Options tab in the Pathfinder window, and click Pathfinder Options, and then tick the little box that says Remove Redundant Points. This will automatically remove any anchor points that are not necessarily needed in the design, and it will save you tons of time from removing those manually. Once you have your logo done, patterns are a really great way to expand the brand. One quick way to do this right in Illustrator is by going Object, Pattern, Make, and then you can play around with the settings so that you find a version that you're really happy with. 
Sometimes when you design something that has a few different shapes, it can be really helpful to see how you've constructed it and all the different overlapping paths. Just click Command Y as a shortcut to show the outlines of all your shapes, and then to go back, just click Command Y again. When you have different paths that you want to join up, but the anchor points just don't seem to want to connect, an easier way to resolve it is by using the join tool. Just circle the shapes that you want to join and the paths will be connected. Once I've joined shapes, I like to go in and remove any anchor points that I don't need in order to create a more clean design. If you want to create a really interesting looking icon that has a lot of dimension, you can use the intertwine tool. Just select the shapes that you want to intertwine and then go Object, Intertwine, Make. Then you can either circle the area that you want to intertwine or you can just hover over it to see a little shaded area and then click on that area to create an intertwine effect. If you have an inspiration image that you want to grab a color palette from, there's a much smarter way than just using the eyedropper. Select the image and then go to Object, Mosaic. Then you'll get tiles of the color swatches in the image and you can use them as the basis for your brand colors. This next tip is something that I learned from a creator called Lucy Eden and that is to create a document for your clients that explains what all the different file formats mean and how to use them. So for example, the difference between RGB and CMYK for example. This is super helpful to make sure the logo you create is used in the right way but it will also save you a ton of time answering questions from clients. Lucy actually has a free template that you can download, so I'll make sure to add a link in the description. If you wanted to create a crisp line in your design, especially for letters in your logo, you can actually modify the eraser tool to be a line, and you can even select the angle of the eraser. This makes it so much easier to create consistent angles when you modify type. I mentioned this one in my video on type, but it's such a helpful tool, and that is the type touch tool. Instead of expanding the text when you want to modify a single letter, you can use the type touch tool to scale, rotate, and edit one letter at a time. Since the text is not expanded, you can then still change the text and use the type settings, which is super helpful. Have you ever wanted to create a few shapes that go from small to big, or maybe from one shape to another? The transition tool actually lets you create two different shapes and then create a gradient between them. You can either create individual steps, which can generate some really interesting results, or you can have a smooth transition from one to the other. You've probably used the type on a path tool to create nice logo lockups before, but you can actually take it one step further and edit the settings to get the exact results that you want. Go to type, type on a path, type on a path options, and here you can change how the text is aligned and even how it forms to the path. When you have a company name that is very descriptive, like Moonstorm or Hardspace, for example, it can be really tempting to replace one of the letters in the logo with a symbol. The problem is this will make the logo really difficult to read, even if it seems really obvious to you who are designing it. We all have different experiences, and we also want to consider how different cultures or even someone who might be dyslexic experiences the logo. Instead, use the illustration as a standalone icon. When we design the logo, the goal is for it to stand the test of time and be a resource for the company for decades. Because of this, we want to avoid using fonts that are very trendy, unless we have a very specific reason. Trendy fonts haven't really been around for that long, so we don't know how well they work practically. We also run the risk of the design looking really outdated in just a few years. I don't think you should feel restricted to pick a font from a short list of tried and tested options, but instead have a think about why you choose the typeface that you do. Is it because it's a really popular one, or is it because it's creating the right feeling for the brand that you're designing? If you feel like the base of a font is really good, but it feels a little bit too trendy, you can always tweak it to fit your own vision. If your client is unsure what logo concept to go with, one option is to do A-B testing. This can be extra helpful if your client has a team of people who all have different opinions and it's becoming a bit difficult to make a choice. I usually use a tool called user testing for this and I set up specific tests for the right target audience to answer questions about how they perceive the logo and which option that they prefer and why. I hope you thought that was helpful. If you want more quick tips on logo design, branding, illustration, or design in general, let me know down in the comments. 
Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.